Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the South County Central School District State of the District for January 27th, 2022. Presenting with us today, myself, Dr. David Perry, Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Timothy Backus, our Deputy Superintendent of Schools, Jacqueline McAllister, our Assistant Superintendent for Management Services and Strategic Planning, and Mr. Christopher Rovilotti, our Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources and Safe Schools. If you have questions about today's presentation, please send an email to communications at scolony.org. We'll be happy to uh, take those comments and suggestions and any questions and get back to you at a further time and point. Thank you. I'd like to introduce our South Colony is Back video. Sit back and enjoy. My favorite subject in school, ironically, was AP Bio with Mr. Tony DeMarco. He just recently retired from South Colony. Reading and writing. Well, I did end up teaching history, so I'm going to go with social studies. It was my favorite subject. I found joy in the story of it all. Um, math and I parted ways about 11th grade. I really like social studies. I like to read, write, and do math. It would be recess. Speed reading because I I just like to read so much. Probably having a photographic memory. To tell if someone's lying to me or not. Have a ghost do all of my work. Uh, photographic memory. I'd like to predict the future. Going through uh, school, I always look forward to pizza day. Salami? Grilled cheese. I gotta say the burger. I would have to say the pizza. Probably the breadsticks. The chicken patty with fries. Ooh. Nachos. Pizza at La Chiquelle. Chicken patty on a bun, and that's today, so yay. Cereal. It just feels right. Cereal? Because I don't want to pour too much milk, then put the cereal in and have it overflow. Cereal in first, so you know how much milk you need. I would put my milk in first, but I usually put in the cereal in first. Cereal. It's just wrong if you put milk in first. A patience and a passion for yard work. I think aside from having a, a green thumb and being active in my yard, they probably wonder like, does he wear shorts and a t-shirt? Does he do it in a suit? I do gymnastics. I'd say I'm actually really good at singing, but not a lot of people know that. I build buildings. I made these keychains. I thought it was cool that I could make these for all my friends. Thank you, thank you, thank you to our Board of Education, to our District and Building Administration, our teachers and support staff, our South Colony students and families for all they're doing throughout these challenging times. We have had quite a bit of success despite the challenges due to COVID-19, and we'd like to highlight those in our State of the District this evening. Here's a little overview of our district achievements. South Colony was ranked 20th amongst 85 capital area school districts. We're very proud of that ranking and continue to look to maintain the top 20 ranking. Our marine sciences class participated in research with the Southern Ocean Carbon and Climate Observation and Modeling Project, which made this not only a national, but an international research project. Our eye care students and staff continue to raise money for the annual chili cook-off and Raider Fest, uh, despite the challenges of the pandemic. Our district rolled out and shared the highlights of our four pillars, academics, wellness, character, and community. Our class of 2021 celebrated an in-person graduation at the Times Union Center. We had moving up ceremonies for our eighth graders, lawn signs and collaboration approach to celebrating all of the students' accomplishments from kindergarten through 12th grade. We've implemented iReady Classroom in math in grades K-6, We've increased our STEAM opportunities in both middle schools. We provided responsive training to our teachers in responsive classroom adjustments. We've increased our supports for students in multi-tiered systems of supports. That was previously known as RTI. This MTSS system now involves mental health approach. 
We're working to get one-to-one -one implementation of Chromebooks district-wide. And we've recently opened the Colony Community Connections Program at the Colony Center Mall to support our students in internship opportunities. Uh, myself, I was uh, pleased to be recognized by the New York State or National School of Public Relations Association as one of 19 superintendents on the nationwide watch list. Our Colony Central High School launched the CHAIN, Colony High School Alumni Integration Network, to help connect our alumni to our current high school students. If you are an alumni you're watching this, please reach out and enter your information so that we can connect you with our current students in Colony Central High School. South Colony continues to offer COVID vaccination clinics to all students and family members and testing clinic on a Monday through Friday basis at the high school mug. Uh, we are very appreciative of the opportunity that our staff and under the leadership of Mr. Rovalotti has allowed our district to maintain in-person instruction as well as a safer environment for all. In the fall, we celebrated the Ambrosio Field naming in honor of former teacher and coach Mike Ambrosio. And South County continued to stuff the bus this year with support of thousands of students in the Capital District. Special thanks to our Transportation Department for all their hard work in this endeavor. Some student achievement highlights. Academically, the class of 2021 graduated over 96.4% of our students. This is up slightly from 94% in 2020 and up from 86% in 2015. 63% of those graduates received advanced regents diplomas. This is again up from 58% in 2020 and 46% in 2015. So we're continuing to make strides towards reaching all students graduating. In CTE, our students participated at the Capital Region BOCI Center. Over 40 students took advantage of career and trade opportunities. Our alternate ed programs helped to see that 32 students graduated directly from the results of these programs. And we're thankful for their staff and the hard work that those students put in to achieve those milestones. And we had three students last year from the class of 2021 enter directly into military service. We're always proud of our students entering and supporting us in the military and wish them nothing but the best of health and happiness. Academically, we offered 15 university and high school classes in science, ELA, math, Spanish, and French. Over 383 students in grades 10 through 12 participated. We offered 36 college in the high school courses. 695 students participated in grades 9 through 12, achieving college credit. We offer 10 advanced placement courses. Over 458 students in grades 10 through 12 participated in, participated in those AP level courses. Our high school earned nation's top high schools in 2021 recognized by U.S. News and World Report. And we also are continuing to be a no place for hate designation through the ADL education program. We're very proud of everything our students and staff are doing throughout not only the high school, our middle schools and our elementary schools. Our Raider Scholars, over 388 students were recognized in grades 10 through 12 for having a GPA of 92 or higher. Senior Christine Kim performed at the All-State Music Festival. Senior Sarah Rockwell was recognized by our DAR Good Citizen Award. The New York State Public High School Athletic Fall Athletes recognized 11 teams and over 154 individuals. We returned to in-person learning in the fall with over 98% of our students returning to in-person learning. We also offered a virtual academy option for those medically fragile students using a regional model approach. In National Honor Society, we inducted 54 members into this new 21-22 chapter at the high school. Our faculty, staff, and alumni are continuing to be highlighted for their achievements. Here are just a few. Kim Backus, our longtime district administrator, was named the deputy superintendent in July of 2021. April Malami was recognized as the Bacher Teacher Leadership Award for English Language Learners. Peter Tunney, our Director of Transportation, was the recipient of the prestigious Art Shock Award for Pupil Transportation by NIAF. Kim Corbett, a 2001 alumni, was hired by the MBA's Phoenix Suns. And Catherine Wake, formerly Salomon, a 2008 alumni, was performing across the nation extensively in stage and arts and uh, has credited her love for her public education in the music and arts as a direct result of her opportunities that she was afforded in South Colony. 
And we thank you and recognize all of those staff and alumni achieving great things. Communications and family engagement. This is one of the things that we are continuing to strive to improve upon each and every year based upon feedback from our community. Just a few items that we've done to try to include more of our communications and be better responsible citizens as we work to engage our families. In South County, we launched the new communication tools. July of 2021, we launched ParentSquare, which helped to design to keep parents informed and facilitate participation in school. It helped to streamline our communications process, allowed parents to receive the types of communication they were looking for, not only at the district and building levels, but at their own time frame. We've stayed connected through a variety of social media, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on our YouTube page. We've built community through a variety of supports, uh, everything from our uh, 5K races to our chili cook-off and our uh, Raider Fest where we recognize our Hill of Heroes. We continue to showcase the positive teacher-student relationships. Uh, unfortunately, we had the passing of Charlie Fernandez, uh, but we had a wonderful uh, opportunity to highlight the work that Sarah Norton had done in support of Charlie and her families and all of Sarah's students. This is just one shining example of the teachers and staff we have in South County. We give back to our community through our uh, Stuff the Bus, through our holiday light parade, and through our Giving Tuesday opportunities. Our student and alumni are continuing to achieve great things. Um, we've recently had students recognized as national championship wrestlers, uh, utilizing uh, their bowling skills in the community and living uh, a quality um, life, as well as establishing a new program at the Colony Community Connections Center. We've also celebrated diversity. One thing about South County, we have a very diverse group of students and family members. And despite the challenges of the pandemic, we've been able to celebrate and recognize all the good positive things that our families bring to our, our district. So we are constantly looking to recognize uh, our families and our students and continuing to celebrate diversity in South County. Our COVID communications have been streamlined. We continue to provide updates and, and uh, at-home test kits. Uh, so we've continued to evolve as the pandemic has evolved. We hope that you're receiving the information in a timely manner and that it's been informative for you. I'll turn the presentation over to Mr. Backus at this time. He'll talk about our remote learning expectations. Hello, everyone. Uh, as we continue on with the school year, uh, we have been able to stay in person uh, up until now. But we don't know what the future holds, and there may be circumstances that we might go hybrid or fully remote. Uh, what we've seen, local districts or neighboring districts have issues with our staffing shortages. Uh, we've been able to keep our buildings open because our staff have been here. Um, but if we run into a situation where we may have staffing shortages or other things related to the pandemic, we may have to go remote. Um, there's the remote expectations for people involved at the uh, secondary level, the 7 through 12 level. Uh, you would see uh, them going on a schedule, uh, the same they would have during the course of the day, which just happened to be remote. Uh, so they would follow their nine period schedule at the 7 12 level. That does not mean that they would be on a uh, Google Meet the entire time. It would be a combination of you know, what we call synchronous, being on the Google Meet and asynchronous, which is doing other activities uh, that they would be assigned to their teachers. So that is at the secondary level. At the elementary level, the K-6, you would have a situation in which they would be working with the classroom teachers on a Google Meet and also being assigned um, asynchronous work. And also uh, would take a look at small group instruction during the course of the day, all determined by that classroom teacher. You see a sample daily schedule, and I would remind you as we get uh, towards the end of this week uh, that the second semester begins on the 31st. Uh, we saw a dip in attendance right after the break, mainly because of testing and COVID concerns and everything else. But now we're back well into the 90% uh, for attendance in all our buildings. Uh, so attendance is important. And as we start to get into the second semester, if you have concerns about uh, your student, your child uh, related to attendance or academics, I would encourage you to reach out to your building principals. And 
Lastly, we have your athletics and extracurriculars. We got the winter scholastic sports are proceeding. We have some limited attendance. We're using GoFan, the digital ticketing system, uh, but it's good to have people back in the stands. Next, we'll turn the presentation over to Ms. McAllister, who will talk about our next generation colony. Thank you. Our next generation colony encompasses our 2022-23 budget planning and also us looking into the future for our capital planning needs. I'll start with our 2022-23 budget strategies. Um, our pri budget priorities as we shape the budget for 2022-23, we'll be focusing on academic equity and opportunities for students, increasing access to service services for students with social emotional supports, English as a new language, UHS and college course offerings, career and technical and digital equity through enhanced instructional materials. We'll also have um, structure and stability of programming at the forefront of our budget development. And as I mentioned, we will be looking to enhance our facilities in our Next Generation Colony 2025 project. As we look at the budget development for 22-23, we have to take a look at the economic factors, and those include our expenses, our revenues, um, our additional foundation aid phase-in plan from the executive governor, our one-time federal funding, the tax levy cap and state and local budget timelines. Trends affecting school expenses in South Colony will be um, some obstacles as we go through the budget planning process are inflation um, up 6.8%. It is uh, something that we have to take into account with our expenditures and as we look at the tax cap, which will be on our revenue side. Um, the health insurance increases, which we are seeing across the board. We have our salary trends, which include contractual obligations with step increases and salary increases for our staff. We also have pension contributions, which are our TRS and ERS contr contributions that the district makes on behalf of our employees. On the revenue side, we have state aid, our tax cap, and federal aid. Um, the majority of our uh, revenues for the district come in the form of our tax levy. But this year, we are also seeing an increase in our state aid, which is due to the foundation aid increase and phase in from our gap elimination adjustment that occurred back in the early 2010s. Um, we are expecting to see an additional $3.8 million, which is a 20% increase in our foundation aid. This is, state aid makes up about 25% of our revenue for the district. So this is a great increase to help offset some of those obstacles that I mentioned prior. Our tax cap will be at 2%. It is the lesser of 2% or CPI. So we will be stuck at 2% regardless that inflation is up to 6.8%. Um, the district has been using and will continue to use the one-time federal relief funds to help enhance programs uh, recover from the pandemic. And we are also, we announced in a uh, recent bulletin that we are doing some fun um, playground upgrades to our elementary schools. Um, as I mentioned, the phase-in is a result of the New Yorkers for Students Educational Rights, NICER, winning a lawsuit against the state in which they have called for a full funding of foundation aid that was cut from districts. We are one of the districts that was cut um, back in the GEA days, and those that will be fully funded by 2024 for us. The federal funding uh, comes in the form of three grants. One was uh, fulfilled in the 2021-2021 the school year. Um, the next two we just received approval for from the state education department, and we are implementing our plan to spend those 
monies in approved places. Um, those are the SIRSA, ESSER, and GEAR, and the American Rescue Plan, ESSER. As we look at the tax cap, you can see, as I mentioned, inflation is outpacing our ability to increase our tax levy, but we have been pretty stable um, in the past, and 2% is our cap this year. Uh, we will announce the tax cap and our district's projected tax levy increase as in the next month or so as we continue our budget development. You can see the trends here. Um, and we will continue to keep our taxpayers in mind as we go through our budget development process. Notable timelines as we move forward. Um, March 1 is when we have to set our tax levy limit. Um, April 5th, we will have a community budget forum. April 12th, we will adopt have the board adopt our budget and the property tax report card, which will need to be filed um, by April 25th. April 18th is the filing deadline for the Board of Education candidate petitions. Um, May 10th, we'll have our budget hearing and May 17th will be our annual school budget vote and Board of Education election. And those take place at all five of our elementary schools. And now we will talk about our Colony 2025 capital project. We are planning to go to vote for a referendum in the fall of 2022. And as we develop our scope for this project, we are hoping to hit all of the needs of our district as we can, as much as we can, and hit every building. So we're hoping that in the high school, we will focus on locker room renovations, bathroom renovations, classroom renovations to take us into the next 50, 10, 15, 20 years and build the groundwork for that next generation of colony. We will also have um, library media center renovations and auditorium renovations. Throughout all of our schools, we hope to do classroom renovations, um, bathroom renovations, and take those facilities up to um, today's standards. We hope to have um, an athletic turf multi-use athletic field at the Ambrosio Stadium field. And as we move forward with um, our transportation buildings and grounds and district offices, we did put out to vote last spring a referendum to purchase a property off Broderick Street. and. As we move forward, we hope to have that building, those plans put into place into this next capital project. Um, as we move through the elementary schools, we will be bringing Veter Elementary up to standards with the rest of our elementary schools with a new library media center and hoping to do some cafeteria kitchen renovations, classroom renovations, and as I mentioned already, the playground renovations at all of the elementary schools. and. We can't talk about the next generation without technology upgrades, which will include additional security cameras, secure card access entry points at buildings, and technology infrastructure upgrades. That timeline will has been ongoing and will continue as we refine the scope. And as we refine that scope, we will be doing presentations, outreach to our community to let you know what those plans are. Um, and then as we get to the bond referendum vote, we hope to go out to vote for October 18th, 2022. And construction would begin in 2024 through 2025. And with this project, um, there will be a tax increase, but we are hoping to offset majority of that with, um, the New York, with New York State building aid and the use of our district's capital reserve funds, which we have been funding over the last few years. Next, we'll present our COVID-19 protocol reminders. Mr. Robilotti. Thank you. Uh, the most recent changes to protocols occurred last week. 
And as a district, we are committed to updating our guidance as it comes in from the CDC, the New York State Department of Health, and the local Department of Health. We want to remind the community that testing and test kits are available Monday through Friday from 9.30 to 1.30 at the MUG. It's a curbside service, so you can pull right up in front of the MUG lobby and someone will come out and help you. For special arrangements for test kits and pickups uh, outside of those hours, please uh, email me for those arrangements to be made. As we move toward measures to coexist with COVID and in-person learning, uh, the main focus becomes symptom monitor monitoring and testing. Students with symptoms can test at the MUG clinic with a lab tested PCR sample. Results are usually 36 to 48 hours, depending on the volume sent to the lab. The other option is to use distributed home test kits. Two consecutive negative results, 36 hours apart, would allow for a student to uh, return to school in their classroom and in-person learning. There is an attestation form that can be found on the top of the banner of the district website. It's a Google form and easy to follow. And that must also accompany your child's return to school through the use of two at-home uh, test kits. If your child tests positive, then they would isolate for five full days. Day zero is the symptom onset date or the test date if they're asymptomatic. Then five full days of isolation from that would occur. And on day six, if the symptoms have uh, resolved or subsided, then your child may return to school on day six. And those symptoms uh, that we would look for reducing would be fever-free, um, not having lost the taste of sense, uh, their sense of taste or smell, do not have a runny nose, um, have no more than infrequent non-productive cough, cough that is getting worse, um, and not experiencing excessive or unusual fatigue. So those are the things we're looking for. But again, as we move forward, we're really going to look at monitoring symptoms. So please continue to have those conversations with your child each morning before they return, to, before they come to school, and at evening, and make sure they're feeling well. It's the best way to keep our classrooms, hallways buses and community healthy thank you thank you mr revelani so looking ahead to 2020-23 we've got uh, many uh, challenging decisions regarding our school reopening what that will look like uh how we utilize our financial resources to sustain our programs and our capital project needs that we've outlined we will continue to conduct school climate surveys of our students staff and parents to gain valuable feedback and information as we develop uh, plans for the future. We will continue our equity report card development and our committee to diversify our initiatives. I'm very proud of the work that our DEI committee has been doing and continue to work on those initiatives throughout South Colony. We'll also be in the process of upgrading our strategic plan as it guides us through 2022 through 2027. We are currently in the process of working with our uh, community groups, uh, our stakeholder groups, at uh, both the elementary, middle, and high school, uh, involving students, staff, and parents. And uh, we will continue that process as we get through the uh, spring and into the early part of the summer of 2022. If you have questions about today's presentation, once again, please submit those to communications at scolony.org. We thank you for your time and attention in watching this presentation today. Wish you all the best, and uh, thank you very much. Go Raiders!